What if you wanted to track every change that occurs in an entity in your domain? For example, you wanted to record when an entity is created, when it is modified, and also maybe who was the user who made the change. This practice is called auditing. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement auditing in your application with very little effort and how to make it reusable throughout your application. Let's dive straight into the code so that I can show you what I'm talking about. I picked the member aggregate root as an example. Inside of this class, we have a change name method. It's used for obviously changing the first and last name of this member. Let's imagine that we have a requirement that whenever the first or the last name of the member changes, we want to record the date and time when this change occurred. I'm going to show you how we can implement this in a reusable way with NAD Framework. Inside of the primitives folder of our domain layer, I'm going to add a new interface. I'm going to call this interface iAuditableEntity. And this is what we're going to be using as the base for our implementation. Before I proceed with what we need in this interface, I want to show you a cool little trick that was brought to my attention by Danilo. He saw that I was wasting time clearing the unnecessary namespaces in the videos. So he posted a nice comment on one of my videos explaining the keyboard shortcut that I can use to simplify this. It's Control R plus Control G and bam, the unused namespaces are gone. So thank you Danilo for that, I really appreciate it. Moving on, what I want to define in this interface is two date time fields. The first date time field is going to be the created on date and time. And the second is going to be the modified on date and time, and I'm going to make it nullable. This field is going to be null when an entity is created for the first time. All right, this is all that we need inside of this interface. Let's go to the member class, and I'm going to make it implement this interface on top of the aggregate root implementation. So I auditable entity. Let's go ahead and implement it. All right, I'm going to move these two properties up here right next to our existing properties and that's it now what i want to do is go to our persistence folder inside of the interceptors folder i'm going to create another save changes interceptor i'm going to call it update auditable entities interceptor let's go ahead and make this class public and i want to make it inherit from the save changes interceptor from NED framework. The save changes interceptor already comes with a lot of the useful methods implemented, and we want to override the saving changes async method. What I want to do inside of this method is before we call the base saving changes method, I want to process all of the auditable entities that are available in the change tracker and set the appropriate values for the created on and modified on date. I'm going to start off by storing the DB context in a variable. It's available on the event data parameter. Let's make the type explicit. If the DB context is null for some reason, let's just call the base implementation of the save changes and return from this method. I'm going to copy that over. Otherwise, the DB context is not null and we can go ahead and implement our logic. As I mentioned, the DB context change tracker contains all of the entities that are modified inside of the current database transaction. On the change tracker, we can access the entries by calling the entries method. And we can specify the type of the entry that we are interested in. The one that we want to access is the iAuditable entity. And this will give us all the entity entries that implement the iAuditable entity interface. Now that we have the actual entity entries, we can store that in a variable and iterate over them in a for each loop. So I'll say entries, make the type explicit. Let me format this a little better. And I'm going to iterate over the entries inside of a for each loop. For each entity entry, we want to check what is the actual entity state. So I'm going to say if the entity entry state is, for example, added, that means that this entity is going to be saved to the database for the first time, or rather is going to be inserted to the database in this transaction. So the appropriate thing to do in this case would be to set the created on property value. To do that, I'm going to access the entity entry and on the entry, we can call the property method. 
where we can pass the expression for what is the property that we want to access. In this case, we want to access the created on property on the iAuditable entity interface. And then we want to set the appropriate property value. We do that by accessing the current value on the entity entry and we can set it to the current date and time. We also need to do the same thing for the modified on property. But in this case, I'm going to check for a different entity state. The one I'm looking for is entity state modified. So if the entity entry state is equal to modified, I'm going to do a similar thing. Call the property method, access the modified on property value, and set the current value of this property to date time UTC now. All right, so this is the implementation for our interceptor. It's relatively simple. We are using the change tracker of the DB context to get the available auditable entities. Then we are iterating over the collection of the entity entries, checking the entity entry state, whether it was added or modified, and then setting the appropriate property value. We also need to tell Entity Framework to actually use this interceptor. To do that, we need to head over to program.cs. Let's move to the part of the code where we are registering our database context. As you can see here, we already have an example from earlier where we added a previous interceptor. So let's add our new interceptor as a singleton again. So update auditable entities interceptor. And now that we have registered it as a singleton, we need to resolve it from the service provider and register it with the DB context. I'm going to rename this variable from interceptor to outbox interceptor. I'm going to add one more variable for the auditable interceptor and resolve it from the service provider. So get service, update auditable entity interceptor. Now that we have resolved it from the service provider, we need to specify it in the call to add interceptors. We can specify it before or after the outbox interceptor, and this will affect when it is called when we call save changes. So let's say I want to execute it after the outbox interceptor has completed. I'm going to place it after that interceptor in the add interceptors method. And this is everything that we need to configure our auditable entities interceptor. So let's see how it works in action. I'm going to place a breakpoint at the start of our interceptor here, and I'm going to start the application and I'm going to head over to Postman where I prepared a put request for updating our member. So we're here in Postman where I have the put request for changing the first and last name of the member. Let's make a change to the first name of the member and send the request. As expected, we hit the breakpoint in our interceptor. So let's walk through the code and see what's going on. Here we are getting the auditable entity entries from the change tracker. If we take a look at this collection, you can see that it has one value, which is the member that we just modified. If I continue into the for each loop, we are going to be accessing this entity entry, which represents our member. And if you check the entity state, it says that the entity state is modified. So we are going to skip over the first if block and enter the second one. And here we are setting the modified on property value to the current date and time. And when this completes, we save the changes to the database and return from our API. I want to show you one more example. I'm going to place a breakpoint here where we are checking that the entity state is equal to entity state added. And I'm going to go back to Postman. This time I want to call the post endpoint for registering a member. Let's execute it and see what's going on. So we hit our breakpoint inside of our interceptor. And notice that the entity state is equal to added this time. This is because this is the first time that we are adding this entity to the database. So this time we are going to be setting the created on date and time to the current date and time. And we won't be setting the modified on date and time because the entity state is not equal to modified. We complete our for each loop and we save the changes and return from our API. If you found this video useful, consider leaving it a like to give it a boost with the YouTube algorithm so that we can reach a wider audience and grow this channel together. Subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.